In addition to the theory of evolution contradicting the general timeline of creation, it further contradicts the precise chronology of creation as revealed in Genesis 1. The omnipotent Creator could have created everything at the same moment. He could have created everything in the precise order that evolutionists theorize the universe developed over 14 billion years of time. There are an infinite number of ways that God could have brought everything into existence. However, there is only one way that the Bible says He brought the universe into existence, and that one way contradicts evolutionary theory. Consider a few of the discrepancies between the chronology of evolution and Genesis 1. First, evolution alleges that the sun and other heavenly bodies evolved millions of years before the earth. However, according to Genesis 1, God created the water-covered earth on day 1 while He brought the sun, moon, and stars into existence on day 4. So which is it? Was the earth created three days before the sun, or did it evolve millions of years after the sun? One cannot logically embrace both accounts. Second, evolution alleges that billions of years following the Big Bang, earth evolved out of a massive cloud of dust that was billions of miles wide. What's more, there was no water on the surface of the early earth, as bodies of water did not form allegedly for millions of years. Does this scenario sound anything like the biblical account? Certainly not. God spoke a water-covered earth into existence on the first day of creation. On day two, He divided the waters. It was not until the third day that God made the dry land to appear. Once again, God's chronology of creation and the evolutionary theory stand at odds with one another. Third, another frequently disregarded discrepancy between evolutionary theory and the Bible involves fruit-bearing trees and animals. According to standard evolutionary thinking, plants first colonized land around 465 million years ago. It wasn't until the evolution of trees 80 million years later that vegetation could spread around the globe. What's more, trees with roots, seeds, and leaves supposedly evolved nearly 100 million years after the first land plants. There were fish in the seas and tiny creatures such as insects on land, but according to evolution, seed-producing, fruit-bearing trees bloomed millions of years later. According to Scripture, the omnipotent God who created everything with the breath of His mouth said on day three of creation, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. The Bible then reveals, And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good, so the evening and the morning were the third day. It's really very simple. God made grass, herb, and tree, seed, spore, and fruit on the same day of creation. There were no epic-long, time-laden processes that turned plants into shrubs and shrubs into trees over millions of years. God said He did it in one day, and it was so. Furthermore, He did it prior to His creation of any animal life. Although evolution says that some fish and insects were around before fruit-bearing trees, the Bible teaches otherwise. Finally, consider how school textbooks have taught for years that birds evolved from land animals, allegedly from certain dinosaurs. Yet the Bible says that God created every winged bird according to its kind on day five of creation, while He created everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind on day six of creation. Birds first, then land animals. Friend, the chronology of creation as revealed in Genesis 1 completely contradicts evolutionary theory. Atheistic evolutionists know this. Creationists know this. Yet a lot of Christians who are sympathetic to the evolutionary timetable seem not to see or don't want to see the stark difference between the chronology of the two. The sooner evolutionary sympathizing Christians acknowledge the clear contradictions between the theory of evolution and the biblical creation account, the better. If evolutionary theory is true, the Bible is wrong. And if the Bible is true, evolutionary theory is wrong. To quote the prophet Elijah, how long will you falter between two opinions?